Okay, today we put a hat on for this glare. This is the marketplace. Roast my deal, do not. So we're, we're going to just going to go random. If your bike comes up in here, or you put whatever you're selling against nothing personal, it's definitely not against you. It's just we're just critiquing. We're just giving market value appraisals here today. Um, all right, so here we have here Cannondale. It's a 2010 Synapse for 600 bucks. It's listed 19 hours ago. This would be a fantastic bike for someone getting the cycle. 600 bucks. I'll take a group set. You know, very, very nice bike, these ones. 51 centimeter frame. So there you go. 200 some new. Looks like it's in incredible condition. 600 bucks. 600 bucks, and it still hasn't sold yet. This is what we're talking about here. You know, like we're going to open up some of these ones here, and we're going to show you um, what we've got going on here. The S Works. It's it always funny, the S Works. <laughs> S Works customers. Uh, sellers, buyers, etc. Typically, are um, you know an interesting bunch. We are. What else can we got here? Can we open up? S works crank. This one here's this one's well, been still listed, listed for a year. We've got Candle Super Six, not beautiful color that one. Um, and over here, what else we got? All right, that, we'll start with that. Let's go shopping. First up, we off the bat, we have a 2015 S Works. So it's probably going to be a, yeah, it's an SL5. Really nice bike. It's been listed over a week ago. $3,000. This is Australian dollars. 3000 bucks. I think it was listed for a little bit more the other day, but now it's down to three grand. Um, these are good. These ride really nicely. The issue is it does potentially have issues with the seat posts, these SL5s do, because it is proprietary internal clamps. If you do it too tight, it can crack the frame. If it slips, it's just. It's, a, it's really bad design. This The SL5 was sort of the start of the fail for Tarmac. But it is a very nice riding bike. So if you have one of these and have any problems, good to go. The fork, proprietary. Uh, prone to the ring of death. This is a chi These are Chinese-made frames and forks. Nothing like that. But the tolerance is sometimes a little bit iffy. Um, so if your headset comes a bit loose, you know, rider error, manufacturer error, who really knows? You know, so if you're going to buy one of these bikes, make sure you look at the fork. And make sure there's no ring of death because getting a spare fork for a specialized bike really really tough because it's proprietary uh, it's really proprietary uh, so you've got the durace mechanical 9100 looks like it's a bit mixed 9000 yes it's a very nice bike again these these bottom brackets had some issues so if you're a powerful rider they can creak and groan and crack around so they're not the best design a bit, a bit poor quality but a really nice bike to ride so that's three thousand bucks still hasn't sold Next up, we have listed five weeks ago. This one's three and a half, dropped to two hundred fifty bucks. It's just this bike's going to sell for, um, you know, this. So what's going to sell for? What's this worth? You know, max, max fifteen hundred bucks. Um, assuming the fork's okay. Assuming the fork's okay. And this we here we got this one's max a grand. I was trying to get three and a half dreaming price. It's, it's, the, the reason why it's dreaming price. It's an SL4, so again, prone to bottom bracket issues, prone to ring of death. Otherwise, really nice riding bikes, besides those two main important issues, BB issues and ring of death. Otherwise, a really nice bike to ride. SRAM 4s, there's 10 speed though, and it's not DI2, and it's not disc brake, which means the value of the bike goes down a lot. I mean, it's, I prefer, obviously, rim brake mechanical, or even DI2, but over disc for road, but that's not what the average buyer's looking for, so you, the person who's got to buy an S works, they don't like buying old stuff. It's all about having the latest. It's about flex flexing. I've got S works, bro. What do you got? I've got, I've got the latest S works, man. Oh, your S works is three years old. Really? Mine's, mine's the latest, bro. You know, so if it's 2021, it holds the best value. Uh, especially with S works, they devalue very, very quickly um, because generally the people with the pretentious people who buy them. Myself included, I generally go for the latest ones. Back in the day, I mean, I wouldn't buy an S Works new ever again because they're just junk bikes. But these ones are really good if you don't have an issue with the fork or bottom bracket. Now we've got here, I can tell it's hat. We've got a second hand mountain bike, um, just rebuilt. You know, so I'm going to say it's, this photo's not so good. Is that 29? Yeah, it's a 29. -er. Um, again, it's 4 1 for a hardtail that's been well, like, well used. It's not going to happen. Those photos are too dark as well. I can't really see what's going on with this bike. Um, it's got Mavic. It doesn't have carbon rims on it. It's uh, all new components. It's XT. It's just, yeah, it's 4 1, no way. What's it going to sell for? A grand. I mean, who's buying hardtails these days? This is a really nice bike, 
But who's buying hardtails these days? You know, I prefer a hardtail, but the market value of it, you know. And if you, if you spent 4000 bucks down a mountain bike, you wouldn't get something as good as this. But, you know, so maybe if, if a friend was going to buy it, you know, but then again, it's, like, it's really, really hard to sell these bikes, especially in you know, S-Works stuff, for that, that sort of money. This one is uh, S-Works 2020 Venge, hardly ridden, I, no joke, because these ones suck to ride, they're so heavy and sluggish, and that E-Tap is just so slow, it's so painfully slow. Um, and there's these deep dish wheels in Adelaide, it would be a very nightmarish bike to ride, it would be very blustery, you know, and you wouldn't want to go in the hills in this, because these things are heavy, disc brakes, specialised bikes, heavy, well, pretty much every road bike disc brakes is going to be heavier than its rim brake, um, you know. So it's got 64 mil wheels, so this is really bad in the wind. Very non-aero wheel. Dude, right, what do you mean? It's aero, it's aero, it's aero. Go and come to Adelaide and ride with 50 or 60 mil front wheel, you know, and, and tell me how aero that feels when that Wesley's blowing hard on your crosswinds. So 12 grand, you know, it's, no, no, what's this going to go for? I mean, the group set's current, but the frame's old. It's a Venge. Cycling Tips says the Venge is dead. And when Cycling Tips say that, all the pretentious accountants, dentists, fat barristers go, I can't be seen on a Venge anymore. So it just devalues it massively. So this frame worth maybe a grand in Australia here. And a group set, yeah, you get some good, the group set's the main value. The wheels as well, they're, they're, they'll, you know, they hold a bit. So I'm going to say three to 4,000 bucks this bike would go for. What are, are they chasing again? 12 grand, no, three to 4,000 bucks you're going to get for that. Here we have a beautiful color SL5 again. Again, seat post issues potentially ring of death issues potentially and the OSBB issues potentially creaky creakies beautiful colorway um you know this bike has done a bit of work i remember i think i was talking to this guy it's done about fifteen thousand k's this bike's basically ridden around australia you know so there's no warranty there this is you know it's a beautiful color the way but it's four nine it's been listed for three weeks you know three weeks it's gonna sell for windbreak um you know, mechanical, what's it going to go for? 1,500, you know, 1,500, assuming the fork is okay. But it's done 15,000 Ks in the clock, you know, ring of death, there's a pretty strong chance of that. Um, it does this very nice looking bike. I like the look of this. But again, the wheel's a bit, bit, bit tall for Adelaide riding, unless you're like a, a quite heavy rider. So there you go, it's 4.9, you know, 1,500. I, I mean, for me, would I buy for 1,500 bucks today? You know, I would because I could probably sell it for seventeen, make a quick two hundred bucks. But otherwise, for myself, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ride this bike because I have I already have enough bikes similar to that. Uh, time makes it works. S well, <laughs> this one here? It's four thousand two hundred dollars. An SL four for four thousand two hundred. This is the Nadabali one. Um, it's yeah, you know, it's going to be, it's going to go for about fifteen hundred bucks. It's got compact cranks in there. Not many people want a compact crank. Um, who ride S works because it's all about the, the 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 show versus the go. It's got zip two hundred two, so it's got a shallow section wheel, and these are shitty hubs. These hubs are sh absolute shite, Hambini style um, word shite. Uh, it's just you know the, the rims are good. I've got two hundred twos. The rims are great, but the hubs you got to rebuild the hubs out. Great riding frame, but again, ring of death on the fork potentially, bottom bracket issues potentially. Um, you know, it's I've got Natasha's. She's got one of these. That's where it's crank and it's just creaky, 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 and it's just a lot of faff around. 27 two post with standard clamp, great. Beautiful riding bike, but 11 speed durace, you know, not worth much at all. It looks to be in good condition though. This bike hasn't, you know, looks to be in okay condition, not much buffing on the cranks. These rims though have seen a bit of wear because they're starting to fade. That, that's really lose, you lose a lot of points for that. All right, basically, when you buy a bike and you want to get max retail for it, don't ride it. Don't ride it. Zip carbon bars. Eesh. When I see carbon handlebars second hand, I'm like, man, they're worth nothing really. Like, just, what are they worth? You know, they've been dropped or crashed or over-torqued, over-tightened. You know, it's just, yeah. I can see here, zoom in here. Oh, here we go. You can zoom in here. So you see some paint cracking around here. So that is concerning. Um, that is concerning. And look at that. See that? That dusty, effect, that's just a very old carbon. It's just a cosmetic issue, but it's going to really devalue things a lot, especially for the uh, the person who wants that perfect-looking bike. So 4.2, um, I'd buy this, you know, for a grand. It'd be worth a grand for me. Um, 
1200 bucks max. Max 1200 bucks. But again, it's got the zips. Those hubs are shit. They break. Um, unless the hub's been switched out, okay? I'm going to say a grand. It's got zips. A grand. All right, here we have. Here we've done that one. And we've done that one. We've done this one. And this is this is a frame I'm selling. It's a hundred bucks. A lapier. A lapier. A really, really nice frame, but no headset, no fork. Um, this was ex warranty stock, had issues with the fork with the paint apparently. Um, so I, got, I ended up with a few, few of these frames. So hundred bucks. Can't sell it. Can't sell it. Rim break. Um, and this one here is a crank. <laughs> one to five hundred bucks. Um one to five hundred dollars. You know, and then now to down to one fifty, and you know, and it comes with the bottom brackets. You know, it comes with the ceramic speed bottom bracket. Also comes with bottom bracket bearings. These came with ceramic speed bottom brackets. Factory, I'd assume that's a pair of the crank. So you know, it's got ceramic, potentially ceramic speed BB on there. It's almost a brand new crank, and it's one hundred fifty bucks, and it's in incredible condition. Yeah, but you just can't sell them, mate. You can't sell them because who's who's using BB30 these days, you know, so you're fucking about 50 bucks for these, all right, here we go, here, um, we have got a S-Works, an SL2, great bike, um, but again, Papaya 2 forks, so it's going to be an old bike, this is like an 11, 12 years old bike, so it's got the Dura Ace, oh yeah, it's got the nine seven nine seventy groups in their 10 speed, which is once that rear derailleur dies, it's all it's all going to landfill. The group set, uh, shifters, etc. Unfortunately, because getting those spare rear derailleurs that still work consistently, good luck on that. Um, well, this is a really good group set. So I mean, I've you know I, I remember I had one of these. Actually, I sold one of these, and it's still kicking today. So you know, it, it depends. It's luck of the draw. Sometimes they just last forever, and sometimes they die. Um, so it depends. It depends. Um, but a fantastic group set. It works as good as the current 11 speed, 12 speed stuff. So it's just about getting spares. Shimano, why did you sell us a rear derailleur? So hard to get spares for. Okay. So if you're a high mileage rider, you know, you're smashing out big miles, yeah, then I wouldn't recommend this group set. If you just, you know, a bit of fitness riding, then yeah, the group set's going to last you a long time. But big mileage rider, stay away from that group set. DI2, 7, 10, 10 speed durace, because it's just. If it dies with big use, and then yeah, everything DI2 has a, a mileage use by date. So if you're a mile monster, stick with mechanical. If you just you know five ten thousand k a year, then DI2 is all right. This one here, beautiful looking Cannondale. Wow, amazing looking Cannondale. Four two. Not even going to happen. Oh, not going to happen. These Mavics. This is ten speed, ten speed, ten speed mechanical. Doesn't have the spider ring. I think it's probably one of the best color candles ever. What do you reckon down below? I guess one of the best color. I've got one of these in my garden, the frame only. It's been sitting there getting spider webs on it. I'm just getting a, getting a fork to match is just proving impossible uh, in that colorway. But uh, I think I'll just sell the frame for 50 bucks. I'll probably sell the frame alone for 50 bucks, literally. Uh, use someone use it for Zwift or whatever. But yeah, really nice bike. What's this going to go for? You know, looks like it'd be a good condition. Good condition, but it's tends to be mechanical. You know, I'd, I'd give them a grand. I'd give them a grand. Eight hundred bucks, no wheels. Those Mavics, they're they're good, but uh, you know, what are they worth these days? Yeah, you know, it's these are fantastic bikes. These are fantastic wheels, but they're really really hard to sell. You know, unless you've got someone who's like, you know, going to buy a pair of wheels today or buy a bike today. And and, that, and their budget is four thousand bucks, and you know them, and then you know you you a bike mechanic, and they're, they're going to get value from you. But buying secondhand off someone you don't know, there's no warranty, there's no like you know like, like yeah. I got a cycling mate who's going to buy. I was looking at maybe thinking about he was buying some wheels around I don't know seventeen hundred Aussie dollars. So I could sell him my Envies. I'll give you a lifetime warranty with them. You know, if otherwise I'll give you hundred percent money back. You know, so it's like. Depends. Does it have warranty? If it has warranty, you can fetch more price, obviously. But there's no warranty of this stuff. So if anything happens with it, you're on your own. You are on your own. Um, so yeah, the the warranty is something to factor into. And then again, will the company even give you warranty? When I sell someone something, I give them a warranty. I mean, if they got problems, come back to me. Work something out. No, this is a really. These are really nice frames. 
um, it's a no brand Australian sort of uh, Chinese deal. Six hundred bucks. It's uh, you know, one of five. Those handlebars have been angled over a bit too. They slipped somehow. Unless that person likes them like that. These are really really good frames. This is a really nice bike. Six hundred bucks. You know, like these are actually legit bikes. That seat angle in that seat. Oosh. Can you imagine riding that with those bar that bar angle? Talk about losing sensitivity down there. Um, you'd be so hunched over and just pounding that perineum. But a good bike if you have a, if you're having too much sexual urges and you distract you from work, go for a ride with a set angle like that and you will not feel yourself for uh, quite a while. You'll forget you have a little dong dong. So there you go, that's the deals there. Marketplace deals. You know, rim brake stuff is worth freaking hardly anything now in Australia. And in the US, it's just disc brake, disc brake, disc brake, DI2. That stuff sells really quick. Um, yeah, anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. So that's the video right there. It's really, you know, the deals out there, man. The in deals are insane. The deals, so, and this is, I mean, there's stuff on Gumtree. It just sells, you know, the, like the the really good deals like sell within the hour, you know. And then you got the the second tier deals like that Cannondale Synapse Carbon Ultegra, were great condition. Um, not stolen. So I actually know who's selling that. You know, like, it was like 600 bucks Australian. And, and who's going to sell it? Like, it's just... The average person who's going to get in a cycle is going to go to a bike shop, you know. And that's great. Because they're going to get sales and hopefully get sales care and customer service and a bike. Hopefully they get all those things. So it's... Cycling's a sport where it's a really steep learning curve. So it's not like, you know, buying a car or a mobile phone where it's just like, yeah, yeah I want that, I want that, I want that. It's like... What size do you need? Gear ratios. And is, is the fork got a ring of death on it? Is it, you know, is the bottom bracket got issues? Is the frame bent? Is the crash crack bent or stolen? Is there any warranty? So it's, it's, it's a really steep learning curve. That's why someone like me, I can make good money buying and selling bikes because I can fit people to them actually the right size. I can, you know, I can tune things out and I'm a bike mechanic so I can give things a full strip down and sell it with quality assurance that this bike doesn't have a ring of death, that doesn't have any issues, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, the average person who's buying a bike isn't mechanically minded like I am. And, I, and I've trained myself. To, if I can do it, anyone can. Right? So don't think I'm special. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm special needs, maybe, some people think. But in terms of mechanical skills, I train myself. Right? And that's just, you know, if I can do it, anyone can. These bikes, these the good bikes, the best bikes out there, road bikes and mountain bikes, are the ones that are easiest to work on. The new stuff or integrated cables, the hydro disc cables going through the bars. It's like, oh my God, that's a nightmare to deal with. And those bikes are worth so much, but I wouldn't want to... I've got the, I've got the SL7, the SOX SL7, and man, I freaking hate that bike. I hate it with a passion. First of all, problem. I'm grateful to be able to have a bike. I'm grateful to be able to invent about it. Don't don't get me wrong. But man, it's such... I'm just, I really wrote it yesterday for some power data testing again. It's just like... I couldn't get my dial, dialed and set up on it because the seat post proprietary and you got to buy a whole new seat post and even then it's not going to get my slam forward position. I've slammed it as low as it's going to go and it's crimping the cables. It's just a stupid freaking design. The SL7 is, for me, the dumbest tarmac ever. Again, first world problems. So it's... The good bikes don't sell for much and the crappy bikes sell for top tier dollar. This is the world we live in. 